Alrighty, hello again. So now we're going to talk about layout. I'm going to give you a general overview of layout in this particular tutorial. And the next tutorial will be about how to create your final portfolio for your class. So to start uh, this one, this is what happens when you open layout. You're going to get a couple of boxes. This one has tips in it and it, it can be really useful and you can turn them off by clicking this button and you can get to them through the help center. Uh, but it, they do tend to give you a couple neat um, uh, references to let you know what's going on. Um, so I'm going to hit close. Uh, and this is your splash screen. It's kind of like what uh, pops up at the beginning of SketchUp where it makes you choose a default layout. Uh, but it's also similar to what happens in Painter. So it's a shortcut to a bunch of different things. You can just cancel it, but one of the things you want to choose is your paper type. You can have something that has a grid on it. You can have blank paper, graph paper, plain paper. You can have a storyboard, something with an already preset thing. Or you can have something that comes with a title block. A title block is going to be an interesting thing to use. And I'm going to go over that with an example that I already have for you. Uh, so to start with, we're going to go ahead and grab... Um, just plain paper for this demonstration. I'm going to click open. I'm going to start. And also keep in mind you have A3, which is European paper sizes, and then letter, which is our paper sizes. So I'm going to go with letter landscape, which is probably a good idea for you as well. So open. There we go. So now I have a layout. So it, it's currently untitled, and you can see I've got a little page one tab up here. I've got some recognizable tools from SketchUp, a pen tool. I can do freehand lines, regular lines, arcs, circles, rectangles. I've got a few more interesting shapes, circles, ellipses, um, uh, lozenges, lozenge and bold are very interesting shapes. But uh, one of the reasons is because it's a little uh, different making shapes in layout than it is in SketchUp. I have text tools, dimension tools, which you can do angular, angular or linear dimensions. An eraser, uh, a dropper, which does the same thing, but it picks up as it did before, it picks up styles. Uh, now this is the split and join tool, which is a little bit different. I just said that creating shapes is a little different in layout than it is in SketchUp, and this is why. We'll use those a little later. You can also make this into a presentation mode, kind of like PowerPoint. So then as I click, it'll go through pages. This is an add button and it's to create more pages. And once I click that, these previous next buttons become active. You can also add a remove tools from the toolbar and currently we have all of them. So you can see there's a lot less tools in this one up here than there is in SketchUp, but there's a lot more tools over here. The bottom is called the instructor and this one will give you more tips and instructions to help you figure out what's happening in layout. The scrapbook is kind of like your component library. You've got a bunch of things that already exist that you can drag and drop into your project. So it's also a little bit like PowerPoint where you have those arrows that are available. So that can be useful. It's also very useful for um, some of those architectural elements that you would see in actual drawings. Also people. Um, but the scrapbook is kind of additional things. It's not super necessary, so I'm going to condense that. Layers are very similar to layers that we experienced in Painter. We're going to cover that a little bit more layer later, but I'm going to leave that open. Pages is kind of, kind of looks like layers. <laughs> Uh, but it incorporates some of the buttons from up here, so you can add a page down here. You can also title those pages. So if we go up here and say title page, and then maybe this one is table of contents. Well, you don't have to do this, but I wanted to let you know that you can rename your pages if you would like. Okay, so you can also rearrange them so you can grab and drag and drop and rearrange them in this menu here. So you will you might use this for navigation in order to move around so that you don't have to um, 
Mm, come on, move, move. Fine, don't move. I don't like you either. Uh, so that you don't have to hit these buttons so many times. And also to be able to move actual pages to another location. Okay, here we go. really angry about moving that page. And I think it's partially because my computer is a little bogged down right now. There we go. I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to grab and drive that project down. There we go. Huh. I'm going to close that. The text style gives you all the normal things that you're used to seeing with text. So if you start to type text and you go, hey there, I want to show you some fun stuff. You can take that text and you can make it any font that you have on your computer. And you can make it any size that you want. Right? So that is how you can do test. You can text. You can also do bullets and things like that. So usually when you're using text, you'll pop that open. You can also use dimensions, and I'll show you that a little bit more in my next example. This is your SketchUp model menu. And what that means is one of the main reasons that you would use this particular program is to put a SketchUp model in it and show different angles of your SketchUp model. Uh, pattern, you can do the same kind of pattern fill shape styles, fill, um, stroke, uh, edges, and you can also choose color on things. So sometimes you may want to draw in SketchUp and if you want, or in layout, if you want to draw in layout, you may do some of the same drawing methods that you use in SketchUp. Now, I want to point out that if you grab your selection tool and you grab an object and you hold the control key, you're going to make a copy, just like in layout. The only difference is you're going to default to the move tool when you grab your selection tool and hover over an item. Because it really doesn't have another uh, function, because it's not three-dimensional the way SketchUp is. So some of these things are pretty intuitive. You can grab these arrows on the corner, pull them up and down, hold shift key to keep it locked in the same proportion. Don't hold shift and you'll change the shape of it. You can grab and draw one side only and these are very similar to those handles you get in SketchUp when you're using the scale tool. If you want to rotate, you grab this interior item and you spin it. Now if you notice, if we were building this in SketchUp, when these overlap, they would automatically join together, split and join together. Instead, we have to do that manually. So if I want to do that, now this is happening. Now what if I want to make them similar? So what I'm doing here is this shape, I'm going to select the shape and then say I want the fill of my shape to be a color. So I click on that and now that color is selected by my color area and I can choose whatever color I want that to fill. It's the same kind of idea for pattern except when I click on the pattern button I'm now choosing a pattern out of the pattern folder. So I can choose any pattern I like, choose any color I like to make sure to select this color bar of the fill pattern and select my color. The stroke is the outside edge. I can select the color of that stroke to be red. You can see that it's this line outside. And to make it easier for you to see, I can bump up the stroke of that line. You have to make sure you've selected the object also. And I can also make it thicker if I type a bigger number. So that's six points or six pixels. And I can change the color to whatever I feel like. Again, I have to make sure I select the color. Okay, so those allow me to do all those patterns, but you notice how I disconnected a piece. If I take this other piece over here 
and I fill it with a color. Um, it's not, it's going to pretend that line is still there. So I just did control Z to bring this back. If I want to, let me move that out of the way instead of deleting it. If I want to make this entire thing one shape, then what I need to do is cut on that intersection. I'm going to delete that extra part. And now I'm going to glue it together. And I'm going to glue that to that. And now it's all one thing. Do you see that? Now I can also cut it right here. So that I can take it apart. I may not be able to do it now that I've joined it together. But now that I've joined it together, I can fill it and fill all of it with one color. So it'll operate like it's one thing, one object. So if I want these to make one cloudy shape, So if I want these to all be different, I would go ahead and select their fill, and I would make them different. And I can also change the way that they interact with each other by making some of them in front and some of them behind, right? That's a pretty common thing. So let's say I want this yellow to come into the front. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to say arrange front to front. And I can do the same thing. I can arrange it. I can center it vertically or horizontally on the page. I can flip it. So I can decide that I want all of these to be flipped in the other direction. Now the other thing I can do is I can combine all of these and make them one shape by gluing them together, by clicking on those two lines and gluing them together, and now they're going to be the same color. And I can make them a nice soft white gray if I feel like it. Yeah. So I can add color elements, I can add lines, I can add squares, I can add arcs, I can do whatever I want, and I can do the same thing to text. I can take that text and I can fill it with any color that I want. I can fill the actual thing behind it or if I, I can stroke the box behind it with a certain color. I can fill it with a pattern. White. I'm going to turn this back to white because that's just silly. I can take the stroke and by clicking this button over here I turn it on and off. So if I go back over to here and say I just don't want that pattern to be there anymore, I click on the word pattern and it'll disappear. Um, so pattern fill panel helps you determine what goes in the pattern panel. Colors helps you determine the color of the stroke and the fill. Uh, you can also play with any of these. As you can see on this box right here, I can change that corner that I have right there to be a cut corner or a rounded corner. And the same way these options are for a line. So if I draw a line, and I have that line end. I'm going to grab that line and I'm going to go to the stroke and I'm going to make it a 14 point stroke. So you can really see the ends of it. And I can change that to a circle. And I can change that to a hard edge on the outside or a hard edge on the inside of the line that I drew. I can also give arrows to that line. So I can go over here and I can put an arrow on one side and I can control the size of that arrow. Okay. I, once again, this object can be controlled with the rotation arm. It can be controlled on each side. You can do lots of different things with it. So what does this mean with all these things that you can create? Well, first off, what the really neat thing 
about SketchUp is not only can you create anything you want and put it anywhere you want, but you can add things into layout and it will automatically update back to SketchUp. And what I mean by that is if I go to Edit, sorry, File, Insert, and I grab a SketchUp model that already exists. It's going to think for a minute. And then it's going to give me a window. And what this window is going to do is show me the inside of a SketchUp model that already exists. Now, on this model, I have several scenes. And we talked about scenes during SketchUp. So I can choose any scene that I want. I can choose the section scene. I can choose the elevation scene. I can choose the ground plan scene. And that's an already established look that I have set up. I can choose any of the uh, standard views that are in SketchUp already, back, front, top, right, of any scene that exists, no matter how much sense it makes or doesn't make. I can also change the scale. So I can tell this that I want it to be in eighth inch scale, or I want it to be in quarter inch scale. And what that does for me is if I go to the elevation section and I say I absolutely want this to be in half inch scale because that's what ev elevations are normally in. Uh, the other thing I want to do is check this box which says preserve scale and resize. And what that'll do is when I open this window it stays the same size. If I turn this off, do you see how the thing just kind of jumped bigger? If I turn that off, what'll happen is that when I start to resize the window it'll keep the same thing in the window, it'll just make it bigger. So sometimes you do want that on, and sometimes you do want it off. Depends on what you're trying to do. Usually I keep it on because I want something to stay in the scale I want it to be in. Now let's say I want to look at this and I don't want it to have this sketchy style anymore. Do you see how the corners kind of have a, an overlap and there's gray in the background? And I don't really want that. I want this to be black and white. This Styles button has all the styles we've already seen. I can make it a blueprint style. I can make it that chipboard style. I can make it an x-ray style and see straight through all the way to the back side. A good one to use, however, for this is the hidden line style because it gives me lines, it gives me clear, clean lines uh, that are nice and small. But you can choose any style you want. Now the other thing that's interesting about the SketchUp model tab is that you can uh, you can change styles, you can change scenes that are already there, but you can also right click on it and say open with SketchUp and now my SketchUp is automatically opening for me, opening to that file. I can go to that file, let's see what we're looking at. We're looking at this right here, right? And let's say that what I want to do is add something that you'll see. So I'm going to add a square right here. And I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to go back to layout. And I'm going to wait. And it's going to update. So what it's doing is it's thinking real hard. You can see that spin and circle. And it wants to reread what's happening in the model. I hit save, right? SketchUp, you're making me look bad. Anyway, the point is, is that when you change something in SketchUp, it will alter in it will alter in oh, there it is. That's really in a different place than I thought it would be. <laughs> See? Um, it'll alter in layout. Also, as you can see, if I double click inside this area, I can move around the SketchUp model freely. And I can decide on any picture or image I want to place and be able to present this in a very nice looking way. So I can say, hey, I want to see this part of the wall. And if for some reason I want to change something, I can go back to my model and I can make a change in the right place this time, 
hit save, and it will show up on the layout model. So when I make changes in one place, it will appear in another for me, as you can see right there. Uh, and again, I can change any of the styles of this picture whenever I like. If I want it to be black and white, if I want it to be blue, if I want it to be, um, if I want it to be blue like this, I can make whatever stylistic decisions I want from layout. But I can also go back into SketchUp, and I can decide on a new scene and a new style, and I can window scenes, I can add a scene, save it, go back to layout, and that scene will now be in there. And then that scene I can use any way I want. I can put in there and view it whenever I like. So one of the things you may be asking yourself right now is why is this useful? And I'll show you one of the reasons that this is useful. First of all, I'm going to close that, and I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to delete those two extra boxes that I made, because this is actually the set for Fool for Love that we're doing um, uh, in at JSU. And so now I have Fool for Love, and I also have. A full for love drafting set in layout. So what does that mean? That means as soon as I can find it. One moment. Okay, this file right here is my sketch, my layout file. And now that it's a little quieter. Okay, this is updating and it's saying that I have some missing and out of date items. So what happens is if I relink it, it'll automatically find again those I those files that I had previously inserted into um, into this document. So now I have pages, I have lots of pages and I haven't really bothered to rename my pages. But this is a front scene of my model, and again, I can choose to make different, I can choose to make it look different, and make it look more interesting if I'd like to, or um, add some texture to it. Uh, but I'm pretty much, and see, you can see that it says modified stage front view. That means that I changed the style. Instead, I'm just going to click on stage front view, and it's going to re- adhere that style. I also have lots of text written down here that I've inserted all these text boxes. I've typed typed to them. If I double click you can see that I can go into the text styles and I can make them larger or smaller. I can do whatever I like and again I can hit control Z and undo what I just did. These are shapes that were created with squares and a circle. So I wanted something that had an interesting look to it, so I created a square, and I created a circle, and you take them, and you put them together, and you create the curve you want there, like this. had that thing open and then cut where I want to cut and glue where I want to glue and I want to make sure that I get the right pieces and as you can see I can create whatever shape I want to create and then glue it together so I can treat it as one object and that's how you can create these little things so again your text and your pages one of the things I want to show you is that um, it, there are a couple layers, including a cover page layer, unique elements layer, default layer, 
and an on every inside page layer, which I can't alter on this particular page because it's not an inside page. But if I press over, I get to the first inside page. On my pages layout, you can see I'm on the second page. And what this is, is if you click over here, do you see how I can't click on some of this stuff? That's because I want it on every page. I want every page, as I click through, you're gonna see that that sidebar stays the same on every page. And I want it to stay the same on every page, except I want certain things to change. I want the page number to change, I want the scale to change, and I want the description to change. So on the unique elements layer on every page is the things I want to change. On the on every inside page layer, and if I unclick that lock, I'll be able to alter those, is all of those. So I'm going to lock it back up again so that I can't alter it. And as you can see, I can turn that layer on and off with a little I. So that's all the things on that layer. And that will repeat on every page. The nice part about that is that I don't have to retype that stuff. I know it's consistent. And if for some reason one of these items changed, I could simply double click on, I could turn every inside page on, I could double click, and I could change one thing and it'll change on every page. I'm going to lock that back up and you can see those multiple page icons over there that'll let you know. This la layers panel is very similar to our uh, painter layers panel so that you should be able, to, but it's a little simpler. You have the eyes to turn it off, the locks to lock it or not, and you automatically get a unique elements layer and an on every page layer and a cover page layer if you if you use a template, which I did. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier to negotiate. On each of these, because this is a set of drafting, what I have here is I have a window to look inside and view uh, my SketchUp file. So I double click on this, you can see it's my SketchUp model. I'm gonna click out. And I could let that update, but I want to control Z. Whoop. There we go. I'm going to control Z and uh, get it back to the way it was. I've included notes, and as I get a little farther in my pages, you're going to see that I have elevations. And I have, I'm going to double click on this again, and this is exactly the way it was in my SketchUp model. See that? So I'm going to click back out. And I'm going to hit Control Z so it goes back to the way it was. And you can also see that these dimensions are independent of the file. And how I get those is I go to this dimension tool, and then you can see that I can still click on the objects in my model, and it sticks to the corners just like it would if I was in if I was in um, SketchUp. Now this is where you might want to use the dimension style panel. And that's all the things that are involved with making dimensions. Now you can click anywhere and measure anything. Uh, but if you click it on auto scale, it will try to read the scale of the thing you're clicking on and figure out how big it is. Now that's not really zero inches. Uh, architectural uh, style of uh, writing measurements is what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to go with half inch scale. I'm going to tell it which scale I'm in because it's not automatically selecting my scale. And I'm going to... And there you can see that's three inches. So sometimes you have to be a little bit more intricate with this than you would a normal drafting program, but it's very useful. I think it got a little confused because this text box is so big. So the automatic dimension was trying to dimension things inside of the text box instead of inside this view window. And see, you can see that it did it correctly that time. So if you want to make something in SketchUp, let's say you make yourself a chair or a coffee table that you plan on building, you can make yourself drafting on every little piece. Also, if you make a set or lay out a plan of how you're going to film something, you can actually figure out the distance of where to get to something. It makes a good presentation item where you can easily uh, show people what everything looks like and you can show them different views and you can 
show the measurements pretty easily. And it also allows you to make presentations with images. So I'm going to go new and I'm going to grab a paper and I'm going to also show you that that same file insert you can use to insert images. So this is actually one of the images from our earlier projects and you can use that to insert images and play with their size. You're going to do that and work with other things in the next video where I explain how to actually do your project. But this has been an introduction of how to use and walk around SketchUp. We talked about the dimension styles panel, the model panel, the text panel, pages, layers, pattern, shape, and colors. And you should be able to make a general layout. You may not know why you're making one yet, but those are how to use all the tools.